logic, game sound logic, and um, let's um, let's do something. Um, I want to kind of break your thinking a little bit. So, what we're going to do is um, the first thing I wanted to do was take a minute because I know people have trouble with this is to really explain the um, difference between uh, prototype actors and um, non-prototype actors and I don't I don't like that um, I don't like that verbiage so let's let's try and explain it this way I prefer the term parent actor so everything you, all the actors that you make when you make an actor inside of the um, the, uh, the actor and the inspector and the, and the palette here is what we're going to call um, the parent actor and anything that you when you drag an actor out and copy it onto the screen like we did here is what we'll call a child actor so you can have multiple copies of all these actors come on game salad and you can drag another one out here all right so now basically what we have is we have two um, child actors linked to the parent and so if we if we go in here and we open up one of these children we're gonna see it's locked okay it's locked to that means that the link there's a link established between this child actor and the parent actor which is called a prototype in the um, in the actors palette so if we want to go back to the parent we click on this edit prototype or edit parent and we see the code in there now if we go back to the uh, child actor we see it's the same code in here okay so now when once you unlock this what you basically do when when you click this and unlock it is you're breaking the link between um, the parent and the child so in game sound unless you really have to access um, scene level stuff or whatever you don't want to break the link between the parent and the child because if you have multiple copies of your actor then when you make modifications in the code it won't be updated in the children when you break the link if you keep the link then anything you do um, in the parent actor here will be modified in the child actor so let's go ahead and just look at that for a second and let's just go ahead and change this number so let's let's change it to 75 so now if we go back and we look inside our child actor we're gonna see you can see right here it's it's changed the numbers changed because they're connected if we break if we were to break this link if we break it like this and now we go back and we go into our parent actor and we change this back to let's say we'll change it to 25 just so when we look at the other child you can really see I'm not lying to you so if we go into the broken child which is no longer now a child of the parent you can see the number didn't change but if we go back into this one which is a copy a child of the parent actor we can see that it changed so that's what it means prototype actor and all that kind of stuff it just means think of it as parent child so anything in the palette is a parent anything of a copy of it that you've dragged into a scene is a child and once you break the link you sever the link between parent and child and now things won't get updated and there are reasons you'd want to break the link but most of the time you you really don't so that it allows you to um, you could have th this particular actor if it was a platform or something you could have this thing spread across 20 scenes so once you break the links you have to go in there and you have to change every single actor on a scene if you keep the links established uh, then you only have to go in and modify this one actor and your changes happen uh, across everything okay so that's always that's a good thing to know in game solid so let's let's break the thinking up with uh, back to our variables here and, and and modifying attributes and and let's do something a little different let's uh, let's break out of uh, the mindset here let's let me help you break out of the mindset and let's go ahead and let's use a text attribute and uh, let's call this uh, let's call it oh I don't know let's call it tell 
and so we could click in here and we could put something in there if we wanted it to have a default and we're not going to have anything in there right now so what we're going to do is um, let's go into this actor oh let's go we want to edit our prototype and let's keep the keep this what we've got here but let's do something different let's um let's let's change this so let's change the attribute from our boolean to our tell actor so now we're, we're working with a text at, uh, variable and so things are going to change now as we can see that with a t with a text variable it can be contains this begins with ends with or is okay so we're going to do let's just do a straight contains and let's say it's going to contain let's just type let's just type um, small okay so we're going to say when our game tell attribute contains small our text attribute it's going to do this it's going to change it to 25 it's going to make it small now the computer can't read the computer doesn't know that what small means that's for me that's for us so we know kind of what we're doing and we can use words to relate to things and this is where text attributes are great you can use them to control all kinds of stuff instead of numbers and you can kind of keep things in language um, and you do it and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now you we're gonna change this text attribute and uh, we're gonna change it we're gonna change this uh, boolean we're gonna go over to the uh, tell attribute so now we're gonna modify it. we're gonna tell true to change since it doesn't have anything in it we're gonna tell it to change to small now we gotta make sure that it's spelled the same because if they're not identical okay the computer doesn't know what you mean and only knows exactly what you do no capitals and all that kind of stuff it's got to be identical and then down here what we want to do is we want to change it back we're going to change that attribute back to nothing I'm going to say just don't do anything go back to nothing in there so what this is going to allow us to do is in the otherwise command and we could actually as a text attribute we could change this to actually anything as long as it's not small we could change this to big could be nothing could be anything um, as long as it's not small this will go back and do the otherwise command so I'm just kinda trying to show you how the computer is stupid it doesn't care what variable you type you're using it's just looking for changes in that variable and how we change that variable and the type of variable it is whether it's text or whatever you can use them in all kinds of ways because the computer is just looking at things to change it's not doesn't care it doesn't know whether you're using an integer or a real attribute or it's just looking for information and it's looking for the right kind of information um, in certain settings you have to use a certain kind of information because we explained or there's the angle an angle attribute of, uh, of, the, of the rotation let's say over here for this actor is only going to look for a number between 0 and 360 so it's important that we're using an angle attribute to modify rotation okay only because that's how the programming is set up it's, it's the same way with real when we want to modify a real a real thing okay like a position which could have decimal places and we want to have decimal places um, or we need decimal places then we need to use real attributes simply because they uh, let us use decimal places the computer doesn't know the difference it just sees numbers we're just using different variables because they allow us to provide certain types of information in there period that's it it, 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 it it's not what you think it is and so basically this code's gonna work the same way that it worked last time when we press it's gonna change the size down and when we release it's gonna open it back up um, because we're changing the text in that variable and we're telling it if this text variable contains these letters then do this if it doesn't then do that and when down here in this if statement we're saying if you're pressed 
change that game level variable change it to the these letters and if you're not pressed change it to these letters so let's go ahead and just take a quick look at this and actually let's do this before we do that let's go back one more time can't wait for the new interface and let's go ahead and show this attribute let's go ahead and display it so we can kind of see what's going on and that's a great way to debug and to learn is to use these um, use the display um, so you can see what's going on so you can actually physically um, see what your attributes are doing so we see there we go it's big I believe that's because it's in the otherwise right so when we click it small big small big small big because what it did was when it didn't contain let's go back and look at the code and see what you're saying well why did that go to big you didn't have anything in there well let's go look at our let's go look let's look at let's look at our logic what's our logic say if touch is impressed change to big so as soon as we start the game right as soon as we start it we're not pressed right nobody's pressing anything that's the default condition of the game so as soon as the game starts the logic starts as soon as the scene starts the logic starts and it looks through the logic and it says what am I doing and it looks at that second if statement and said well I'm not being pressed so that means I need to change that attribute to big that happens right away because there's a conditions that are happening right away so this is the power of understanding what's happening when a scene starts what's happening in the computer system when things are going what are the default conditions what and this is where your power and understanding your logic and understanding what's going on why is the computer doing what it's doing it's doing it did what it's did because we told it to do it we told it if you're not pressed change it to big now let's watch if we turn this off and we start it we got nothing didn't change the big why because we turned it off we know we're no longer telling the computer to change to big when you're not pressed so when we press it changes to small when we release it's gonna stay there because we're not telling the computer to change back to small it was this, it's the same things we're doing with our booleans it doesn't care what kind of variable it is the computer cares what you're telling it to do and what you're what you what you're not telling it to do it's gonna do as well so it's gonna do it's gonna work as your friend when you're telling it what to do and it's gonna be your enemy when you're not telling it what to do because it's not gonna cooperate because it's stupid it doesn't know it's a computer you have to tell it and this is where when I talk in the forums to people about getting past the GUI this is what I'm talking about I'm talking about look past all this kind of stuff that happens that game salad kind of some of the things that it does for you automatically very and it's very little what it does for you automatically you've got to understand what's ha what the computer is doing what's happening on the device you've got to test these things and really understand what's going on and this is why it's so important to read the cookbook read the definitions watch all the videos and really really understand computers you this as much as everybody wants to tell you on the on the forums that this is not coding I'm sorry this is code code is telling the computer to do something or not to do it that's what coding means in philosophy whether you're doing semicolons or hashtags or you're building line arrays or you're bracketing things that has nothing to do with logic and telling a computer to do something which is what coding is you're telling the computer to do this when to do it how to do it for how long to do it and when to stop doing it that's it that that's logic and so if we don't understand that, if we can't get past that with Game Salad, you're never going to become a power user because you're never going to really understand that the computer doesn't care what you're using. It doesn't care whether it's a text attribute or it's a color attribute or it's a position attribute or it's a, um, uh, a size dimension or 
um, whether it's a rotation, um, it doesn't care. It doesn't know. It just does what you tell it to do. And it's just a matter of putting that information, using the right types of attributes to convey the right types of information to other variables. That's it. That's it. We're just telling one thing to do something when a, when a, a number or a variable is changed to do this or if a variable equals something or doesn't equal something or is less than something or is more than something or is different than something, okay, we're tell, that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing in Game Salad. And um, so anyways, this is the part four of uh, understanding logic. And uh, we're going to just keep building on this project. And I'm just going to begin to keep showing you um, really how attributes just really don't discriminate. They really, it doesn't care what you use. And hopefully I can really start to get you to understand this logic stuff and start to think in logic, think in progressions, think like a computer. And if you think can think like a computer, then you're going to have less problems and you're going to be more powerful in understanding how you use stuff in game salad, salad. And you really, really, really have to understand the ins and outs. A lot of people don't understand how the difference between pressed and released works, like I show you, which are totally different and can totally change as we saw how our code works simply by switching between one of these two things and when you really begin to understand the ins and outs of exactly how this stuff works and how it affects other attributes and how it affects different conditions you really begin to understand how to work this stuff against each other and how to build these things together to begin to use your mind creatively to begin to create logic that does stuff all right, so this is part four, and I uh, hope you're enjoying it. All right, until next time.